Hello again and welcome back to this series of videos aimed at teachers and teaching assistants in primary schools. Um, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, pulleys and how I use them to make moving toys and models in schools. Um, a wide range of pulleys are available from my service. We've got some wooden pulleys here with uh, four millimeter holes, uh, plastic pulleys here, and uh, these pulleys have a, a small two millimeter hole. Um, pulleys are basically wheels with a groove around the outside, and that allows you to connect uh, pulleys together using um, a drive belt. Uh, in schools, we nearly always use rubber bands. Um, it's very useful to have a wide range of rubber bands available to fit the, the pulleys and the spacing between them. And when you turn one pulley, um, it will make the other pulley uh, turn. Um, you may well have come across this pulley before. It's very commonly used in, in, in schools. We usually use it fixed to an electric motor. Um, from my service I call this a P100 pulley, it's often called a motor pulley, it just pushes on and it's used to in de decrease the speed because these pulleys, these motors spin at very very high speed, thousands of revolutions per minute um, and if we connected it directly to the um, axle, the axle would turn at the same speed but when we put it on the ground, the uh, buggy wouldn't move because the axle isn't turning with enough force. So by going from a small pulley to a large pulley, we reduce the speed, we sacrifice some speed, but in so doing, we increase the turning force. So this uh, axle now is turning, I know it's still turning fast, but take my word for it, it's turning uh, more slowly than the motor pulley. So let's look at pulleys um, in a bit more detail. Got a couple of pulleys here mounted up on some 5mm dowel and if we join them together with a rubber band, some number 24. And if I turn the left hand pulley clockwise you can see that the right hand pulley is also turning clockwise. Uh, we can actually change that by crossing over the rubber band. So if we cross that over, oh, it's come out of its groove, there we are. We can now, we get the opposite direction by crossing over the band. That's um, a particularly useful tip if you're making the um, electric carousel. Uh, that's also one of the videos in this series. So let's just pop that back to how it was before. Uh, because these pulleys are the same size, the driven pulley on the right is turning at the same speed as the drive pulley. Uh, now if we change that, if we change over to a smaller pulley, I think this belt is just about tight enough for it to work, we've now got a, a large pulley going to a smaller pulley and can you see that the smaller pulley is now turning faster? So we've now got a, um, a speed difference, a speed increase in this case. But also there's something else happening. The smaller pulley is turning with less force than this pulley. So we've, we've gained something, we've gained speed, but in order to do that we've had to sacrifice something. We've sacrificed turning force. Now I'm sure you, you've guessed that the opposite is true. And if we turn it around and make the small pulley the uh, input pulley, the large pulley is now turning more slowly. We've sacrificed something, so we've gained something now. The large pulley is now turning with more force. So small to big slows things down, and big to small speeds things up. Uh, I have made some models where I use a large pulley to a small pulley but nearly always I'm going from small to big because I nearly always need more force and also in some cases to reduce the speed. Um, now 
we do use pulleys like this on fixed axles but it's more us usual to have pulleys actually fixed to the axle. Sometimes if you're lucky it will be, um, it will be a tight fit, sometimes they have to be glued on. And by doing that we can now fix more than one pulley onto the same axle. Because just one pair of pulleys you don't really get a great speed reduction. Uh, you may notice uh, if you look at the video for the uh, electric roundabout, the carousel, um, it's just got uh, one pair of pulleys and unfortunately it still spins round at a very fast rate. So to get a, um, a greater speed reduction we need more than, one pair of, more than one pair of pulleys. And that's why we fix them to an axle because now we could get the axle spinning by a small pulley to that pulley and then we could run a second rubber band from that small pulley to another large pulley. I've got an example of that here. Uh, this is the um, electric ferris wheel. It's also a video in this series. And for this it was very important to do something about the speed. If it span round as fast as the roundabout it would just be ridiculous. And we've now got um, a nice turning speed here so that the people aren't flung out of their um, chairs. So let's turn it around and see, look at the mechanism. And you can see there are now two sets of pulleys. Um, we've got our, our old friend the motor pulley on the motor here connected to a large pulley. Small to big slows things down. So the, the, the bottom gear, um, axle, I beg your pardon, the first axle here is turning more slowly than the motor. The motor is whizzing round. This one is turning at a slower speed, but still too fast for our purposes. So we've got another small pulley on that axle, which in turn is fixed to an, another second large pulley on the on the second top axle. So we, and that produces a really nice, slow, sensible speed, uh, which won't terrify our, our our electric ferris wheel customers. So small to big small to big. Well, another way that pulleys are used is that they're mounted in what we call pulley blocks. Um, if you look at, um, if you do some um, studying of uh, old ships, sailing ships, galleons, how on earth did the sailors uh, lift up the sails, the really heavy sails and the masts, uh, and the uh, rigging, they had no machinery, it was just uh, muscle power. Well, they used pulley blocks. Uh, now, you can buy these uh, from science suppliers, but uh, as you know, I like to make my own. Um, what I've got here is a rectangle of corex, and I've cut a hole out here, and I've made sure the hole is big enough for the pulley that I'm going to use. Excuse me, I've just dropped an axle. So that it's long enough so there's room above and below for, to, to get the string through. When you cut out these rectangles, make sure that you've got the flutes, the holes in the corex running across. Can you see that? Um, I, would, I wouldn't have less than a centimetre up here just to give it to make sure that it's um, strong enough. Uh, we also need uh, a plastic straw. I just cut off some very small pieces of spacers. We look for the centre hole and just push a piece of dowel through. Again, you need to find some dowel that's a nice fit so that it just fits and it's loose enough for it to spin. If your formal limiter dowel doesn't do that, then um, drill out the hole slightly to make the hole a little bit bigger, or possibly sand down the dowel. So push it through one of the centre holes, slide on a spacer, slide on the pulley, then the second space on the other side, and then push it into the hole on the other side. Just push it through a little bit more. There we go. 
and there's your your pulley block mounted in. Uh, I've used a hole punch just to make the uh, two holes so that it can be fixed by string. Um, you, you can make a double pulley block. You, you'll need a, a wider piece of um, corex and, a, and a, a wider hole in the middle and there's a, there's a third piece of straw spacer to space the two pulleys apart. Um, and if you'd like to hold on in the second part of this video I'll show you how you can use pulley blocks to create mechanical advantage. Thanks very much. Well as you can see I've got um, a whole series of uh, ho my homemade pulley blocks mounted up on this frame here. Um, I could have just put a, um, a, a broomstick handle, handle between two tables um, and they're all um, connected up to uh, what a thousand grams, one kilo, one kilo of, of mass of masses at the bottom. Um, yes, that feels quite heavy. Um, weight is uh, a force. Uh, weight is not measured in grams. Mass is measured in grams. Weight is a force, and forces are measured in a unit called a newton. And I've got a force meter here, a newton meter. And if I use it to pick up the one kilogram mass, I can see that it takes nearly 10 newtons to lift it up. So let's see if we can get any uh, mechanical advantage using these pulleys. Now with the first single pulley here, we're not going to get any uh, mechanical advantage. Uh, if I actually put the force meter on here, which I have done, it's still going to take 10 newtons to lift it. But it's more convenient, it's safer to pull down on a rope to lift the weight. Uh, you've probably seen builders working on loft conversions on people's houses and at the top of the scaffolding they have um, a single pulley block so that someone else can be on the ground, pull on the rope and lift up a bucket full of bricks. So um, a single pulley, although there's no mechanical advantage, it's still more convenient and safer. You can also use your body weight you can almost hang on the rope to help you to uh, lift the weight. Here we've got um, two single pulley blocks and this time immediately as soon as I pull on the rope it's, it's incredible it, for some, somehow the one, the one kilo feels lighter. I can tell straight away that it feels lighter but um, I know that it can't be. I know that that's still um, at one kilogram. So what's the secret? It's because I'm move, pulling on the string a greater distance. Uh, if I hold the um, two strings at the same point with my right and left hand, trying to make sure the string doesn't come off out of the groove, can you see that my left hand is moving further than my right hand to move the weights the same distance. So by moving a greater distance we can use less force. So that's the secret of how uh, pulleys work. Uh, with this one we've got a double pulley block on top and a single pulley block beneath. So we're going to move an even greater distance now and we've got an even greater mechanical advantage here. We had a, a 1 to 2 advantage here, we've got a 1 to 3 advantage. And um, I've only used um, 3 newtons there, They're just over 3 newtons to lift it. And in the last example here we've got two double pulley blocks, still with 1 kilo. And yeah, that feels incredible, that just feels, it, it just feels so light, it's amazing. But if you noticed, I'm moving even further now. I'm moving the, um, the whole uh, height of the frame right down to the table to lift it the same distance. So by travelling a greater distance, we've used less force. And in this example, um, I've only used two and a half newtons to lift the same weight. So um, I hope this video on pulleys has been of some help. And I hope you get a chance to uh, make some models and toys that use them. Thanks for watching.